perhaps the most pervasive false theory has been the, the link between autism and these vaccines. Um, now we have enough evidence to actually convincingly reject any such causal relationship. Um, the same goes for diabetes, for example, um, that we have enough epidemiologic and mechanistic evidence showing that there is no such an association. Um, by saying that I don't want to indicate that these vaccines don't cause any side effects or adverse events because vaccines, like any other substance you, that you enter your body, they could potentially cause some adverse events. But these adverse events are really, really rare. So for example, people with um, anaphylaxis or severe, severe allergic reaction to a component of these vaccines should not receive them. Um, this is a very rare adverse event. We are talking about maybe one or two additional cases per one million doses of these vaccines. So it's important to have that in mind in terms of the scope of the problem. Another group of people who should not receive these vaccines are pregnant women. Again, these are live vaccines, so they have the live virus, attenuated live virus in them. So women who are pregnant should not receive these vaccines. They can receive these vaccines upon termination of pregnancy, but not during pregnancy. Another group of people who should not receive these vaccines are people who are severely immunocompromised. Um, so for example, people with HIV infection, if they have good immunity, immune system, they are okay. But if they are at the phase of the um, disease that their um, CD4 levels are really low, they should not receive these vaccines. Um, the other um, adverse event that is probably the most common adverse event associated with measles containing vaccines is febrile seizures. So these are convulsions that are associated with fever, um, especially occurring among um, children in their second year of life. Um, we have evidence now that we have one additional case of febrile seizure maybe per three or 4,000 doses of these vaccines. These are usually benign. They are not dangerous. They may be um, scary for parents when they see their child is seizing, but usually they are not associated with any long-term adverse events or um, any um, neurologic damage. Um, the other question that comes up often is whether adults should receive these vaccines. So we know that in the pediatric immunization schedule, in the US, uh, children receive their first dose of measles containing vaccines between 12 and 15 months of age, um, and the second one between four and six years of age. It's important to note that the second dose actually is not a booster. The second dose is there to just ensure that people who didn't respond to the vaccine in the first place, let's say five or 10% primary failures, um, upon receiving the second dose, actually they do respond. So that's, that's the function of the second dose. Um, in fact, the second dose can be administered after four or five weeks, weeks and it, the, the interval between the first, first and second dose doesn't have to be years. So it's just a decision that different, country, different countries they make about their immunization policy. So in Canada, for example, the interval is much shorter than it is in the US. Um, so what about adults? Going back to that question, adults should receive these vaccines if they haven't received them before. Um, anybody who was born in 1957 and afterwards, they should receive these vaccines. Um, if they don't have any, any immunity against them and they haven't received the vaccines. Um, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices recommends one or two doses of these vaccines for adults. Um, typically one should work, but for certain groups, such as people who are in students in post-secondary educational institutions, or people who work in um, healthcare settings, or people who are about to travel internationally, usually two doses are recommended.